Hey everyone, welcome back. We are at the final episode of The Devil's Hour. Amor Feti. Amor Feti? Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. With the suspect in custody, the answers to life's mysteries are within Lucy's reach. But will she believe them? So, I still am unsure what to make of this. You know, they had come in about like time travel, uh, stuff like that, which does make me think maybe it has something to do with that. You know, he said he was murdered as a kid, which I said, which as I said, could have been a metaphor for maybe like his soul being murdered. Or maybe he was. If so, then he's gonna have to explain how he's back as uh, an adult. Unless it's like a whole Jason type thing. Um, and I'm curious as to what the devil's hour has to do with it. Besides the fact that she keeps awaking at 333. Why 333? Granted, yes, we know that that's the devil's hour. <clears throat> but why? What does the devil's hour have to do with this? Who is Isaac seen? Isaac and Ellen. Not Ellen, um, Sylvia. Who are they seeing? So I hope that we will get every answer today in this episode. They did start giving us a couple of answers, I'd say roughly about season three, <clears throat> when we started seeing stuff. And like I said, the other thing is, why was Lucy seen like herself married to Robbie? Or marrying Robbie? Which we saw Nick and his wife. And again, were they ghosts? Or is it like a alternate world. You know, maybe something happened where Lucy was married to Robbie and something so tragic happened and he did like this conversion therapy or aversion therapy, I think is what it was. And then sorry, it, because it kind of reset her, she then went ahead and married Mike. But yet she and Robbie somehow found each other, because in his brain would have had to have been, yeah, I was gonna say his brain would have had to have been wiped too. But the thing is like, if he was dead, we wouldn't be able to, I don't know. We're gonna get going on this and hopefully have all our, all our questions answered. Let's get started. Jack Harkness is what he is. Where are we going? Uh oh. Daddy. Yeah, Malcolm is like the only one that I'm getting cares about. Yes, Daddy. God. It's 
So then we have to pray. Let your God be the judge of that, yes, not is. you. Pray with me. Here we go. Why drown the boys? What the hell is the point of that? <laughs> You are a fucking idiot. Yeah. Don't touch. You know, since they're repeating this, obviously at some point he remembers or something. This is for. Okay, now let's go. <laughs> this must be the one. Yep. The change. Doing a very adult thing at nine years old. It's Michael Myers! I think he's dead. I think you can stop, Gideon. So, so bloody. My human mother would never understand. No one would. So I ran away. Jeez, ran away at nine years old. Father again. It was never long before they found me. But every time they did. Mm -hmm. Every time. Cycle of peace. I started again. I had my next life. He's Isaac. Oh, house fires, car crashes. He's Isaac. If you can really see the future, why not stop 9 11? How? With a phone call. Fixed point in trying. time. It's not. Believe me, I can't stop 9 11. Oh dear. Not yet. But I did stop 7 12. What's 7 12? Exactly. <laughs> so, you're a hero. I never said that. We found child pornography on your laptop. It wasn't my laptop. No. I stole it from Hal Slade. I thought if I could get it to the right people, he'd be arrested. Locked up before... Before he died. But that's not what you did. No. Because I changed my mind. Why? Because I saw what was on it. The, the world's evils like the lyrics of a song. Okay. What does this have to do with Lucy? When I buy that book, I fill it with everything I need to remember. Well, it's like I said, he's Isaac. As I discover new information, I add to it. Turn to the last page. His father killed him. He killed Slade to stop Slade killing those girls. I he took my son, I think. How do you know? Did he, what? Did he think someone was going to hurt Isaac? Mm-hmm. Gideon's deluded, but he's not sadistic. He thinks his actions are, are righteous. I don't know why they are if he's getting rid of his bad guys. If he thinks he's trying to rescue Isaac. My Lord, why don't you? You can trust me, Tara. I know you don't doubt me. We'll have a good cross. Oh. 
kind of cleanse himself of that. Then he was gone. But Evelyn could sense something was different. Part of her would always remember that crash. Huh. She started to see things that weren't there. Different patterns of the wallpaper. Isaac. Shadows without weight passing across the room. It's just every new lifetime, her memories return. So she knows what she has to do. Yeah. You have to put your hoodie down. You could have left your hood up. No, he doesn't have to because he knows what's going to happen. Good job, Gideon. said that one time wait because he knew the line was going down. You didn't kill Aiden he said. But his victim wasn't pregnant with him. No, because when your friend waged war on those dealers, nothing was the same. I couldn't track the chaos, I'm sorry. Trying to fear could change a person's nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to change him before he commits those things. Yeah, that sounds lifetimes. Come back now. So what about her looking like she was battling cancer? Chemo. She was a cancer patient. I was married to Mike. No. Robbie, it's so amazing. He's not supposed to be here. That's why you tried to take him away. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, Lucy. No, I didn't. Give me your shoelace. Oh, please, please, just give me your shoelace. Please. Lucy, don't. Give right. him. Give him the shoelace. I'm words are words. So apparently she knows Gideon because there was the flash of him looking old and sickly and her, I guess, going to chemo or something. Of over. It's sig it's significant, you know, re representing the show, the reflection, the repeat, the reoccurrence. But it still doesn't explain Dylan yet, or Meredith. But I guess it's all flashes from what's happened. And the 
she lays his prey. Huh. He's got the aglet. say that this life was different. So why she has these memories, memories of her other lives, at least if she was a cop. They still captured him. So not all questions were answered because we had that picture of Dylan dead, which wasn't explained, but Isaac setting the place on fire and basically killing himself, which I think he wanted to kill Mike as well, but Mike got out. But doing that reset you know because she mentioned deja vu so because they talked about deja vu and how it's like like a memory or something so it was like since he said that isaac was the anomaly that he isn't supposed to exist he was kind of the one that changed the balance, pretty much. That as he burned and as she 
burned in that setting, that life faded away. Because of course, every other time, she was married to Ravi. And of course, in this one, she did kiss Ravi. And Ravi had an attraction because it was like that life deja vuing or knowing or intersecting. Never really explained though the devil's hour, like why it was always 3.33, you know? It's like that's when her life kind of intersected with each other. But that part was never really explained. See, I said, I said that I wondered if they were going to answer all questions and they didn't. But it did kind of explain the whole Meredith thing there at the end, because what she was seeing, of course, was Meredith from this other life. So basically this whole story with her and Isaac was kind of like part of the deja vu or part of the fake life. And we don't really find out what happened to Gideon, unless of course there's like a an Easter egg, which I'm gonna go ahead and check on. I'm just gonna fast forward through this, see if I see any flashes of anything that could be an Easter egg which it's not looking like it. We don't really know what happens to Gideon either because, you know, we saw in this one that he had escaped because he always does because he knows how to do this. And that's why he said, see you soon. But then of course, when it kind of flashed back and she was there as a cop, was he, I mean, was he in custody? I mean, you saw him, you know, doing the slamming down on the table as though maybe he was in custody. But yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. But Gideon really wasn't that bad of a guy because he was trying to kind of restore balance. It made me kind of think of Edward Cullen. Because, you know, Edward would try to kill, like, murderers and rapists and stuff like that and feel guilty about it. But as Bella pointed out, she said, you probably saved more lives than you took. Because by going after kind of the scum of the earth, he is preventing future murder. You know future Hitlers. And that's kind of what Gideon does or is like. He's like preventing future Hitlers. And it was interesting, Mike resenting Isaac. He said he and Lucy had three great years and then Isaac came along and destroyed it. And that makes me think about, there's a page on Facebook called, I regret having children. And I myself am child free. I chose to not have kids and I love my life. The I regret having children Facebook page is very eye-opening and also kind of sad that there are people out there who think like that. He would have been better, I think, being child-free. That's the impression I got. Because unfortunately, some people on that Facebook page do say that having kids destroyed their lives, ruined their lives, which is what Mike was saying. You know, he enjoyed his life without the kid. Just like I enjoy my life without kids. Difference is I didn't have one and I also did not have one burn in a fire. Because the thing was when he saw that, you you know, he, they talked about like monsters 
That was kind of Mike being a monster right there. So Mike kind of proved himself to be the monster that he would allow that to happen. I don't know, maybe he felt, at least in that reality, that by having the child die, he and Lucy could eventually get back to the life that they had, which would never happen, honestly. So that part was different. This life apparently was different from the ones of the past and she was remembering the ones of the, of the past where she was married to Ravi. But like I said, they never explained when you saw Ravi dead. And he did say, I haven't killed you before. It was very interesting. But like I said, not all questions were answered. Somewhat answered about it being the devil's hour, but sort of not. I'm kind of wondering if there might be a sequel. They did leave it open. You know, especially since Gideon got away. There could possibly be a sequel. A season two. It was funny because yesterday or the day before, I saw kind of the stats. And it said Devil's Hour was number three in the U.S. Which makes me happy. Go Peter. And I'm sure part of that is Whovians tuning in to see him. But I'm sure there's probably non-Hoobians who are just like, ooh, this sounds interesting. Let's check this out. And so hopefully, if that's happened, they have discovered Peter and are going to check out, like, Devil's Hour and the thick of it and stuff. And I will also mention his brother being named Malcolm, I think, could have been completely innocent. But I was wondering if that was a reference to Malcolm Tucker from the thick of it. And then, like I said, the thing about the jelly baby, like, yeah, that was a Doctor Who reference. <laughs> so there were some Doctor Who references in there, which I'm not surprised about. Because the jelly baby, I'm sure they added later. It would have been even funnier if it had been him. Either being offered one or offering one. Definitely a good show, compelling, kept me interested. I do wish... A couple other questions have been answered. Would be curious to see if there will be a season two. And if so, will we see Gideon again? What, maybe it will be a brand new life. But you also have to wonder, why Lucy Chambers? You know? Like, he mentioned that he had saved Sylvia. And of course, Lucy came down the stairs. And yet he kind of kept track of her after that. Maybe he did that with everyone whose life he impacted. Because I was just like, hmm. That was awfully selfish of her mother to try to kill herself, at least in the previous lives. You know. But it turns out that Mike is a bit of a monster. And he's not even supposed to be there. He's not really in the, in the story, to quote Chuck from Supernatural. So thank you for joining me for the final episode of season one of the devil's hour the season finale i guess let me know your thoughts in the comments well how do you think peter did i mean obviously he's a living legend so he's gonna be good in anything that he does what was your favorite part what was your least favorite part you know what do you think about mike just allowing isaac to die like that of course i think isaac would have died anyways and maybe isaac knew that Mike was going to do that. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And if you can, support me on Buy Me A Coffee. I would greatly appreciate it. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Shout out to my editor. You can catch her link in the description for all your editing needs. Please take advantage if you can. I'm sure she would love to work with you. Check out some of my other videos if 
you can, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. But if not, I'm just glad that you're here and that you joined me for the Devil's Hour. And I'll see you next time. Bye.